I'm here at Sandown Racecourse in Surrey. They're expecting 15,000 people here today and half a million pounds to be exchanged in cash. I'm here because I've developed a guaranteed system for winning at the horses. This system allows me to predict 24 hours in advance, quite openly, which horse will win in big high profile races. Now to prove this, six weeks ago, I took a woman, a random member of the public, and I told her which horse was going to win in a certain race. It did win, she was intrigued. I then did it again and again and again. She started to bet larger and larger amounts of money. Now today, that woman has scraped together every last penny that she can find, and she is risking it all on one final race. Is it really possible to accurately predict the winner of a horse race again and again and again? I'm gonna tell you exactly how that's done. Welcome to the system. He heads down towards the second last with Jamie Moore. He leads by six or seven lengths. Horse racing, often nicknamed the sport of kings, can be traced back to the 12th century after the English knights returned from the Crusades with Arab horses. They were bred with English horses to produce the thoroughbred that is the breed used in horse racing in the UK today. Since the chariot races of Roman times to the multi-million pound global business today, horse racing has been a popular sport in many countries throughout history and is often inextricably associated with gambling. Tula build and four bar. Tula build the favourite and four bar. In reach line. Two to one, that's two to one. The tic tac is two to one, he's on the nose, he's two to one. A bookmaker is a person who takes bets off of punters, punters back horses, and the bookmaker pays you out if you win. If it's ten to one, if you put a pound on, you get ten pound back. So somebody there just had £10 on Pasco at 7 or 2. Well, 7 or 2 is 3 and a half to 1. So for their £10, they'll win £35. Plus their 10 estate, they'll get £45 return. But as you can see, we've got horses on the board here at 200 to 1, number 14. Now that's got practically no chance of winning. It's like me swimming the channel with a double bed on my back. It's got no possible chance. You know, but they've all got four legs. You know that they've all got four legs on the tail, so anything can happen. It's just instinct, really. You just see a horse, you think, oh, that looks good. I'll maybe put my five pounds on that one. I was rather obsessed with gambling as a teenager and in particular the idea of winning systems and it was around that time that this system was born a guaranteed way of having somebody win at the horses again and again and again so I needed somebody who would benefit from my system so I took a random member of the public after making sure that she didn't have a history of gambling and I sent her an email without mentioning my name predicting the winner of the next day's horse race My name's Kadisha. I live in Kew. I work two jobs. I have a son. My personal situation is I'm a single mum. I pay all bills by myself with the two jobs that I have. I never have a large sum of money because it always goes out because of responsibilities that I've got in life. I was sat at my desk when I got my first tip. I received an email first. I thought it was a bit crazy, a bit mad, but I thought, hey, I'm up for a laugh, so bring it on. I didn't tell Kadisha that it was me sending her the predictions because I didn't want that knowledge affecting her. But instead, I set about sending her a number of anonymous tips uh, sent over several weeks so that she would gain the confidence in the system that I wanted her to have. I got it by email first, then I got confirmation again by a text. And it gave me details of the horse, time it was running and where it was running, and it said that I wasn't able to bet, I could just, I just have to watch the race. We emailed Kadisha and offered her the chance to take part in a TV documentary about an anonymous tipster who claimed to have a perfect system for the horses. Along with the email, I also sent her my first prediction and told her not to place a bet, but just to make sure she watched the race. I told her that the 9.20 at Wolverhampton the next day would be won by a horse called Boz. They're off. 
and Bosworth swiftly into its stride in the blue jacket to the inside. On the day of the race, I hoped she'd be watching at home to see if the prediction would come true. She was, and she saw the race was won by Boz, as I predicted. Boz holds on. I had got her attention. I was gutted that I couldn't put a bit on, but hey, I watched it and it won. Now that Kadisha was getting more intrigued, I asked her to keep a video diary of her experience from this point onwards and to keep the camera with her as a tip could come at any time. Placing my second bet now with the system, very confident. Race two, when I was able to put a bet down, I was given just the name of the horse and the time. Again, I was at work, received it by text, again confirmed by email and I literally left my desk. It wasn't even like I need to go out. I just zoomed out to the first betting shop, <laughs> recorded myself, I used to know bet. It was exciting, actually. My next prediction for Kadisha, again, 24 hours in advance of the race, was for the 6.37 at Suffolk Downs in Boston in America and for a horse called Laced Up to win. When I was in Boston, I was like, oh, how can you know who's going to win in Boston? After that comes Laced Up, local... The system guarantees a winner, but despite how impossible that sounds, Kadisha was prepared to put up some of her own money. Laced Up's coming up the rails. Amazingly, impossibly, as the system predicted, Laced Up won, despite not being the favourite. Laced Up gets up on the inside. And Kadisha picked up her first winning. The second race I won about 28 quid. Race three was at Carlisle and my prediction was for Norton Brook to win even though it was an 18 to 1 outsider and therefore the horse that was least likely to win the race. Me again, <laughs> still here. Well as you can see I'm in the bookies now. Carlisle race I've been told so I'm now gonna write out my slip. Fingers crossed. Norton Brook, 18 to 1, 20 pounds to win, it better win, okay? Very anxious, <laughs> nervous, you know, very excited because the last two races won. Oh, good God, this better win. Oh my God, and they're off. I've been confident in the system so far, so I'm going to remain confident. Holding this paper First very tightly. Three left to jump, and Norton Brook keeps galloping on. Norton Brook leads. Oh my God! And they come inside a final furlong. Norton Brook's been out in front for a long time. Two miles west is gaining with every stride. Norton oh my Brooke God! The horse is catching up. Oh my God! The horse is catching up. Together, Norton Brook two miles west. It goes to the judge. Norton Brook has won. Thank you, the system. This is Kadisha's third win in a row. She's just won £360 from a £20 bet on an 18 to 1 outsider that no one thought should win the race. My prediction for race 4, the 245 at Wolverhampton, was a horse called Formation. Race 4, I was out in a bar with my friends. Oh my god, he's going to win again, I'm telling you, I've got so much confidence. I was still in disbelief on who this person is, this anonymous person is, who's this system, what is the system. Formation will put favourite backers on good terms, and so too Jamie Spencer, who once again moves two ahead of seven. Yeah! The chance of four wins in a row being predicted at random are already over a thousand to one, but the system guarantees a win. Kadisha's now won four times in a row and gained nearly £500 in cash. I've managed to convince her the system works and that something extraordinary is happening. I did feel good winning loads of money all the time. Part of what makes the system seem so impossible is that it defies our understanding of probability and influence over future events. And I'm going to show you something now which is impossible in exactly the same way. And that is to toss a coin fairly ten times in a row and have it come up heads every time. Now we film this under control conditions with multiple cameras that won't cut away and it's a genuine coin with heads on one side and tails on the other but I want you to watch this and try and work out how it can be possible because the key to understanding this is the key to understanding the system. <clears throat> Ten heads in a row. Watch. One. That's heads. Two, that's heads. Three, heads.
heads, that is four. Heads, five. Six. Four more to go, and I'll stop. Seven. Three more. Eight. Nine heads. Last one. Ten. Ten heads in a row. Thank you very much indeed. I'll show you later on exactly how that's possible, but for now I need to take what I'm doing with the coin and apply that to the horse races so that I can predict again and again the results of the races and convince Kadisha that my system really works. Now I'm not the first person to try and come up with a horse racing system, it's been attempted in the past but it has never ever worked. My system, though, is the first system that guarantees a win over and over again. And later on, I'm going to show you how. It wouldn't be easy for, for a, a punter to make a living out of horse racing. Two greys, classic Crocker on the outside of Corellian as they go towards the third. There can't be a system. You're dealing with an animal. It's not a machine. You can't set it. If he comes out of the stable the wrong side in the morning, he might not be winning his race. Nation State jumped it better over the creek behind them in predicament and swiftly on defence number five. Well, if somebody said to me they had a system, it's rubbish. Yeah. Really, there's only one winner and the bookmaker's the winner. If there was a winning system, that everyone, that there would be no bookmakers. When we come to work, we come out with a load of cigars when we work because we know at the end of the day we're going to celebrate with a nice cigar on the way home so all you punters are going to lose all your money. That's what we come here with. Just a bit keen to go a bit fast early, Gray. To find a system that will change your life is what we're talking about. That is definitely improbable. And even if you think you've found it, having the guts to back that, to back that up and having putting down large sums of money to make it change your life is, is another step forward altogether. Imperial Commander over it in front from Nation State in second place. Blundering back in third was Karenin, but he had tired horse now. Imperial Commander, the odds on favourite, comes up the hill, storms up the hill towards the final fence here. And he comes towards it, jumps it well. Tony Evans, the Imperial Commander, uh, ten lanes clear of a nation state in second place. There's a decent battle to third over the creek, maybe the one for that. But Imperial Commander, having won here last month, makes it two out of two. Another winner here at Cheltenham. After four wins in a row, it's time for Kadisha to experience the excitement of a live horse race. And while she gets ready for that, I wanted to convince the experts, against their instincts, that maybe it is possible for a system to really exist. I arranged to meet some racing experts to test out some of my ideas and hopefully convince them that I could, indeed, have a reliable system. Phil Bell is the manager of Fontwell Park Racecourse. Katie Stevens is the manager of Hereford Racecourse. James Pyman is a journalist and tipster for the Racing Post. Jim Boyle is a racehorse trainer and a council member of the National Trainers Federation. Can I get you to mix up those four envelopes for me? Just give them a mix. And if you can stick these on yourselves, they peel off and you can put the backings uh, in your pocket if you like. Thank you very much. Just put one of those on you each. And if you grab one of those as well, thank you. Have, a, have an envelope too. You've all been interviewed about uh, this idea of there being a system and uh, whether it's possible to predict the horses accurately uh, and predictably evil sort of said no it's not it, it's not possible i would say that it's massively unlikely but by no means impossible to have a system that would work a, a mathematician worked out the probability of, of having a system that would accurately predict a winning horse every time is uh, it's 1.48 billion to one hugely unlikely as good as impossible but not impossible that's the point actually just massively improbable. So what I'm going to do um, 
is to ask you to sort of step into this world of, of people here. There are 500 Polaroid pictures, and these are just members of the public. And I'm going to ask you to each go and select one of these pictures. It's just really important as you do this um, that it is a random selection. So please don't let what the people look like, you know, how attractive or unattractive they are. Don't let any of that influence you. Some of the, you know, if any of the names happen to remind you of people that you know, again, none of that is to influence you at all. These have to be random selections. That's very important at this point. What I would say is, by doing this, I am showing you how my system works. It'll make more sense to you when you watch the program back, then that'll, you'll understand what I mean. Please have a good look around at them all. you see they're all different. Take as long as you like. When you've got one, just stand by it and let me know that you've uh, chosen one. But take as long as you like. Feel free to have a good wander around first. The pictures themselves have long numbers on the back, but don't worry about those for now. Those will be uh, important later on. Take your time. Just put your hand up when you've chosen one and, okay, great, lovely. All got one? Yeah. Excellent, thank you very much indeed. Unclip the pictures, uh, just take them off the, off the string. There's a couple of little pegs on each one. Lovely. So bringing your picture with you, what I want you to do, not quite yet, when I tell you to, is to come and stand on one of these four black spots that there are here on the, uh, on the ground. So if you come and do that for me now, any one of these four. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. So there are 500 pictures there. You've each got one. You've come back and stood on one of these spots each, thus putting yourself in a, um, in a different order um, and uh, chosen large, I mean, it is by chance, it is random, apart from the fact that whoever would have, probably whoever was closest, whoever took a picture from closest would have had the choice of any one of the four to stand on, probably the, who was last to come in? I was last. Yeah, so you, you didn't have any choice at all. The order you put yourself, if you look at your stickers, is one, three, four, two, yes? And you're happy that that is, if you can just hold on to that for a second for me, you're happy that that is a, randomly, seemingly unpredictable order that you would that you would come and stand in, yes. Okay. That just open up the, the red envelope that you saw it was hanging there all along and just read out what it says in there. The order you will stand in will be one three four two. One three four two. Turn it around, show the camera one three four two the order that you've that you've ended up standing in. Excellent. Thank you very much. Congratulations. A seemingly impossible thing to predict, but the point is, it's not impossible. It's not. It's it's highly improbable, but not impossible. All right. Now you're all odds experts. So, what are the odds of me predicting, knowing in advance which order you were going to stand in? One of you has a choice of four. The next person has a choice of three. The next one two. The next one one. The answer is four times three times two times one, which is uh, twenty-four. One in twenty-four. That's the improbable odds of me knowing in advance which order you were going to come and stand in. All right. Not impossible, just highly improbable. Okay. Next, uh, if you just take the pictures and just, if you turn them around and show the cameras just so we can see uh, who all these people are. Let's get the names as well. Jenny Pringle. Jenny Pringle, thank you. You can just show the camera. Peter Burgess. Peter Burgess. Carl Smith. Carl Smith. Jane Baker. Jane Baker. Excellent, okay. So, sorry, so Jenny Pringle, your, your full name is? James Pyman. Pyman, so your initials are JP. JP. And the initials of this woman are also JP. Are also JP. Your name is Phil Bell. Phil Bell, and show us Peter Burgess. Same initials, PB. Yes. Your initials, do they match? KS. Katie Kay Stevens. Katie Stevens. And what's that, Carl Smith? And your full name is Jim Boyle. Jim Boyle, JB. All right. So your initials match the initials of the photographs that you picked. And please have a look around. None of the other initials match any of your names. All right. Seemingly impossible for this to happen. But it's not impossible, it's just highly improbable, yeah? What are the chances of that happening? There are 500 pictures, so the first person to take one has a choice of 500. The next person doesn't quite. The next person only has a choice of 499 because one of them's just been taken. And the next person has a choice of 498. And the next one, 497. So that number, 500 times 499 times 498 times 497, gives you the probability of you picking the Polaroids, the only Polaroids that have the same initials that match yours. And the, who mixed the envelopes at the beginning? That was you. So you mixed the envelopes, uh, you handed them out, you each took one. If you open them up, take out what's inside. In fact, wait, you do yours first for me, just so we can get this on camera. Can you open yours up? 
Recognize the picture? Yeah. It's a picture that matches the Polaroid that you took. That is Jenny, was it Jenny Pringle? Jenny Pringle. Jenny yeah. Pringle, do you want to take yours out as well, Phil? Hopefully that matches the one that you've just picked. And Katie? Excellent, are you, and you'll do the same for me, Jim? Is it the same? Can you just hold them up with the pictures as well? Just fantastic. You pick the ones that match the envelopes that you mixed and took at the beginning. Again, the chances of that, impossible. Seemingly impossible. <laughs> but the same odds. It's 500 times 409 times 408 times 497, which means if you just keep hold of your Polaroids, but just drop everything else on the floor, just by the, the spots around, just keep hold of the little Polaroids. The chances, what are the chances of all of that happening? The chances of me knowing where you were going to stand, which pictures you were going to take, the uh, initials matching up and uh, matching what you picked at the random envelopes at the beginning. If you come forward for me, if you come back where you were, if you put yourselves back into one, two, three, four order, so one, two, three, four, and I'm going to give you a, uh, I'm going to just give you a, a uh, calculator there. The chances of all that happening is, it's 24 times this here. So if you do, I'll do 500 times 499 times 498 times 497. Anybody watching this at home with a computer or a big calculator might want to do this. Work out what that is for me and then multiply that by 24. The answer I can tell you is 1482065. Doing this? 928000. Is that the correct number? That's the correct number. That's the odds of all of those things happening. Not impossible, just massively improbable. One last thing. If you just hold the faces together so the camera can see, just hold the Polaroids up. You just bring them together a little bit. Excellent. I did say there were numbers on the back, not to pay any attention to them yet. All right, now I'm going to turn these around. Have a look at them on the back before I turn them around. 1482 065 928 Zero, zero, zero. You pick the Polaroids that had the numbers on the back that make up the odds of all of that having happened. And that odd is 1.48 billion, is the same odds as this system existing in the first place that allows me to break the horses every time. Not impossible, just massively improbable. Thank you very much. Something for you to think about. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks for taking part. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Katie. much. Thank you very much indeed. Excellent. I shall leave you with those numbers. Cheers. Mesmerised. I can't believe what I've seen, really. I'm absolutely flabbergasted. I was, I was trying to t turn the numbers over in my head and work out, as Darren was going along, what the probability was. I quickly got lost and the number just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it, you know, it's, it's just astonishing, I think. Uh, if he wants to come and work for the racing post, then I'm sure there'll be a job offer for him. I mean, I think if, if horses are as predictable as, as humans, then Darren's on to an absolute winner. And my opinion has changed. I thought, thought it was pretty much impossible. And I'm now curious to know what he's come up with. I said initially that it depends what side of the stable the horse comes out in the morning, but I think Darren would probably know. <laughs> <laughs> so by this point, Kadisha had received four winning predictions from me. Now it was time for her to experience the thrill of a real race course for race number five. For race five, we now go to Newbury for a high profile and well attended event. Some 11,000 people are watching it from the stands, on top of the millions watching it on TV at home. The name of the winning horse has already been given to Kadisha 24 hours beforehand. There's no way that I or anyone else should be able to predict the outcome. I've come today to Newbury at the races. I've never been to a race course before. This is very much the first time for me. Today I need to put down 150 pounds, which is like breathtaking, and this is going to be on Lively Joe, Joe Lively. So very exciting, very nervous, and he just better win. So here he is from my racing cards: Newbury, Joe Lively, 11 to 2. Kadisha still has no idea that the amazing winning predictions have been coming from me. The day before race five, the 205 at Newbury, I sent her my prediction for a horse called Joe Lively. It's an outsider at 11 to two, but Kadisha is risking the biggest bet she's made so far with 150 pounds of her own money. What she doesn't know is that I'm also here, and after the race, she'll be meeting me for the first time. They're off. The yellow jacket of Joe Lively is on the outside of them. Joe Lively running a little bit free towards the outside for Joe Tizard in the yellow and red jacket. is just over a length behind the leader. Almost now in the first three quarters of a mile as they come again left-handed and into the straight for the first time and head down towards fence number four. Which come is on. Vada Royal 
Come on, Joe. So this is the water jump. Oh, and he's... Oh, my God! He dropped like a donkey. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Oh, my God! This is what I mean. How can there possibly be a system? How can you possibly know? Last on the far side, Divide and Royal. And Manila Temporary has a dog there. Oh, my God! Manila Temporary, God. knuckled on landing, shot Tom O'Brien. It doesn't look like it's going to win. It's in third place. Manila Temporary at the last in the back. Third straight. place, the but rain the started, the wind's getting stronger. How can it possibly and catch up? It's not going to win. Finally in third place, they've got one bench to jump now. It's only a very narrow lead. Here's John, he's almost level with him now as they come towards the last. And he's down to the line and he's almost, he has, he's got, almost got down. And there, Joe is Johnny, and so Joe Lively, who was third at the last and looking beat, is going to be a very fortunate winner of this Marshalls Peugeot 308 Novices oh chase. Oh my God! Joe Lively oh then. Oh my God! The first one of them That's who was under pressure has eventually ended up taking the race. As here's Johnny, the only other one who's so going to get round. Oh my God! Oh my God! I don't understand that. It was in third place all the way. Can you believe it? That's not bad beginner's luck. Can you believe that? 852, 975. <laughs> so after the fifth race and I've won again just under a grand and I'm over the moon jumping for joy that I'm in you know Newbury at a race course seeing the horses live, I get taken to meet the person that's been doing this whole thing, the anonymous person you know that's been doing this system hi Kadisha. <laughs> hello hello i'm darren <laughs> and then i met darren brown and honestly i was scared okay now i'm scared so i was confused thinking oh my god all this time you know gutted i didn't put on more money if i knew it was him you know it's like i'd have retired by now so i've developed a system this is a foolproof 100 percent system of winning at the races and you've seen that it works and you've seen that it works all the time even this afternoon when it just looked like there was no way that it could it did look like that actually now so far you have made some money you've been putting 20 quid 50 quid and then you put 150 quid on today yeah but this is Small amounts compared to what I want you to do next, all right? You've won five races in a row. Yeah. I'm going to give you the name of the sixth winner, yeah. all right? And then that'll be it. Oh, my God. So I want you to put a lot of money on it, all right? Because I want this show to finish with you winning a huge sum of money, all right? So we're talking several thousand pounds if you can get that together. I know the minute I say that, you're going to think, oh, where am I going to get that money from? What happens if I lose? You will not lose <laughs> because the system never fails. Okay. All right, I just want to finish with you winning a massive amount that's going to change your life so okay it's so exciting also if you do do this and if you commit to it as i hope you will i will also tell you i will explain to you how the system works all right so even though it's the last name that i'll give you if you want to use the system yourself you are welcome to you may choose not to it's a lot of work to make it work but i will tell you i will teach you exactly how it works so you'll have that too okay at the moment it's only me that knows exactly how it works you'll be the other person no problem Oh, I don't know. This is crazy. This is crazy. And it's like, how can you know a system for this? How can you? So now I'm going to tell you how the system works. How can Kadisha be receiving correct predictions for each race? Bear in mind the predictions are made well in advance and the races are quite genuine. How does it work? Well, it all starts with this. That is a homeopathic remedy. It's called astragalus. Uh, you take it for viral infections, but you could substitute that for anything you might take for diabetes or insomnia, or indeed it could be a healing crystal or anything that uh, represents an alternative therapy of your choice. But you might have a viral infection. You might take astragalus. You might then feel better and decide therefore it must be an effective cure. The point is it works for you. What more proof could you need? The trouble is, that when these things are tested properly over thousands of people they are shown to really have no effect whatsoever the trap that people fall into is to think all the evidence i need is what i know in my head and i feel in my heart and what i just know to be true but that isn't really evidence for it being true that's just a statement about how much you believe it and also how limiting your own perspective can be now Kadisha believes in this system, she's convinced by it because she's only looking at it from her own perspective. And at home, if you haven't worked out how the system works yet either, it's because you are also only seeing it from Kadisha's point of view. 
Now it's time to force a change in perspective and to look at the bigger picture. And let's begin with that coin again. Ten heads in a row. Watch. To predict a run of ten heads in a row and then make it happen is hugely unlikely. The chance of it happening is about one in a thousand. However, if you flip a coin thousands of times and record the results, somewhere along that line of heads and tails, a line of ten heads is actually very likely to appear. OK, ten heads in a row. That's one. To work out the system, you need to understand that we can only know what comes from our own limited experience. And our experience can often be very far from the truth. I can't see the bowl anymore. Here we go. Ten. <laughs> what you saw was the final minute of what was an excruciatingly long day. We filmed for over nine hours until eventually a clear run of heads appeared. Nine heads. Last one. The impossible became inevitable. Ten. Ten heads in a row. Thank you very much indeed. You now have all the clues needed to work out for yourself how the system operates. I shall fully explain it in a few minutes. I want you to ask yourself, if you haven't already, can there really be a system? Should she be doing this? Is this an amazing opportunity for Kadisha? Or if she takes it, is it a terrible mistake? I'm going to my dad's because I'm going to go and get some cash to put down on the final race. My personal situation is I'm broke. <laughs> so to find as much money as you can is like insanity to put down on a horse. If I won loads of money, I would. I'd give my dad lots and like take me and my brothers and my son and my nephew on holiday. We are here at my daddy's house and I'm so, so scared now. I'm really, really scared now. This is my wonderful father. <laughs> <laughs> and he's yes. going to be giving me a thousand pounds today to put on on the final race. When I told my dad um, about everything, he was just freaked out. He was really, really freaked out. He was worried, thinking, oh my God, am I going to be doing what he's doing, like gambling and betting all my wages away? First started off on winning like 20 pounds and 30 pounds, and then it went up to 360 pounds. Wow. And keeps increasing. I'm trying to get that every Saturday. <laughs> the most I've ever put on a horse is 20 pounds and I double and that lost. And when I lost, I says, that's it. Never, ever again. <laughs> he was just like shocked. You know, he didn't really believe that this was a, to do with a TV program. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thousand pound from my dad. That's a lot of money for us. <gasps> Got the money from my dad. Thousand pounds, feeling very nervous, but I'm ready to roll. Come on, baby. Because of her faith in my system, Kadisha has borrowed from her father and since then has also been to a loan company for more money. She's now come to Sandown Racecourse prepared to gamble money she can't afford to lose. Once her bet is placed, I'm going to explain to her and to you how this incredible system really works. It's been raining steadily here for the last couple of days. The going is very heavy, the ground's heavy. The favourite's likely to be Moon over Miami, one last time out at, at uh, Cheltenham. Mahogany Blaze next in, Paddy Brennan riding this horse for Nigel Twiston Davis. The next one that, that I quite like is a horse called Pancake. Goes well on testing ground, likes the mud. Maradima, trained by Paul Nichols, top trainer. Any one of those four could win it. When we last spoke to you, I told you you'd have to get quite a lot of money together yes. uh, for today's race. Yes. And I understand you've done that. Yes, I have. How much money have you have you got for this bet? Four thousand pounds. Four thousand pounds. Four thousand. Which is One, a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Can you tell me how you got that? I know yeah. you. I know you ended up getting some from a. Um, a loan dad. company, but yeah, and my dad as well. I've got some from my dad, so that's what makes it more scary for me because I've got some of my dad's money. And did you tell your dad exactly what it was for? Yes, and that's what made it even worse. So, your tip for today is horse number two, okay, Moon over Miami. 
So watch out for the green and white shirt. I'm going to go and push a bet for you because I don't want you seeing yet exactly how much you're going to win and everything. So okay. have you got a big envelope of cash on you somewhere? I have. I've got an envelope. I've got loads of cash. Excellent. <laughs> That's a lot of money. <laughs> that is four thousand um, pounds. All right. Okay. You definitely right to do this? Yep. Absolutely, yep. I'll trust right. the sister and you. I'll go do it before the queue gets too long. I'll see you in a bit. Right. Okay. I'm really crapping it. Have I lost the plot? Am I really here? Is this really going on? Taking a £1,000 from my dad makes me feel very overwhelmed and more anxious. That's it. That's your... <laughs> That's your £4,000. This is worth a lot of money. Please. Don't drop it or lose it. You all right? Deep breaths, deep breaths. Do you want to know how it's done? Yeah. Yeah? So a couple of months ago we got in touch with you. Yeah. Remember? And we gave you that first tip. Yeah. You weren't the only person that we contacted. It was actually a very large group of people. It was almost 8,000 people. My name is Christina Brockins, I'm 27 years old. I'm 23 years old. My name is Lewis. My name is Sarah. I'm 28 years old. The system works because Kadisha is not alone. When we contacted Kadisha, we also contacted a huge number of other people and gave them different tips. The system begins with 7,776 people. The people we contacted are then randomly divided into six equal groups. A six-horse race is then chosen, in our case it was the 920 at Wolverhampton, and each group of people is allocated the name of a different horse as the winner. Group 1 is given the name of Horse 1, Group 2 is given the name of Horse 2, Group 3, Horse 3, and so on. Kadisha happens to be in the group, which is given the horse named Boz. The race runs, and of course only one horse can win, in our case it is Boz. Apologies are then sent to the five groups of people whose horses do not win, blaming a glitch in the system, and they disappear from the process. Kadisha happens to be one of those people in the successful group which has had a winning horse. Now for race two, this group is again split randomly into another six equal groups. So today's Sunday, I'm waiting for my latest tip. Well, I'm en route to the bookies now, so this will be my second bet. Just found out uh, we've got the next bet through. It's going to be the first time I've ever been in a bookies in my life, and it's going to be the only the second time I've ever actually put a bet on. I'm in the bookmakers, just at the moment seeing um, which horses are running and where they're running from. Placing my second bet now with the system, very confident. Again, Kadisha happens to be in the winning group and the other five groups with losing horses are eliminated from the process. Exactly the same happens again for race three. The winning group from the previous race is split into six equal groups. Race three is the 220 at Carlisle, and Norton Brook wins, giving us just 36 people, including Kadisha, who have had three consecutive winners in a row. In race four, those 36 are divided into six groups of six, and each is given the name of a horse in another six-horse race. In our case, the race is the 345 at Newbury, and Formation wins, reducing the number of people from 36 to just our winning six people one of whom happens to be Kadisha. So I do it again and again and again, and each time this group is narrowing and narrowing and narrowing, and you're just happening to be in the winning group each time as it goes through. Now this continues to last week. You were not the only person there being filmed thinking they were taking part in this show. We kept you all apart. You're all being filmed. You all think you're the only person being filmed for this show. It's 9 to 2, and it's near the Tipperary. Well, I've just put on 150 quid of my own money on Here's Johnny. The horse I betted on is called Nevada Royale. None of you can understand how you've had these winning names all the way through. But we didn't know which one of you would win. Last on the far side, Nevada Royale, and Manella Tipperary has gone there. The rider just fallen off, so I guess that would be a lost bet. Here's Johnny's almost level with him now as they come towards the last, and he's down Nevada Royale, and he's almost, he has, he's brought, almost brought down. No! And there, no! And here's Johnny, and so, Joe Lively, who Oh, I don't down believe it, last, I don't believe it. Bit. It didn't work. You win some, you lose some. Oh, my horse didn't win. It's a pyramid, which begins with 7,776 people who are all sent anonymous tips. 
all but one of them are eliminated as the system fails for them and we're left with just one single random winner who has had five consecutive wins. So last week at Newbury, you were that last person, the final person who just happened to have those winning names all the way through. That was last week. This week, it is just you and me and those five horses. <laughs> and there is no way of knowing which horse is going to win. Four grand. Four grand. Oh my god! What's going, what's going through your head before we go Fucking into... hell, that's what's going through my head. <laughs> fucking hell. Oh my god. Fucking hell. <laughs> Let's go. We've got to get through. The race, race is about to start. Oh my god, I can't believe you've done that! Oh. oh, this way, this way, this way. <laughs> so now you know, the system is not a horse racing system, it's a belief system. Now my heart is racing. An elaborate process designed to convince one person that she will win, impossibly, again and again. Oh my god. A system so powerful that Kadisha has put up money she cannot afford on a race that cannot be predicted. Oh no! But if it doesn't win... I will faint here and then I'll cry until I die. It's oh, I don't know, I feel sick, I feel faint. Remember, it's Moon over Miami in the green and white checks. They're up. There they go. Maradima from Pancakes. Oh, there they go. And he plays back in third, Moon over Miami. The green and white jacket, probably a little bit behind them. Heading down the side of the course, downhill, Maradima. Five or six lengths to moon over Miami. It's raining, it can slip. Oh, my stomach. Unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. Moon over Miami, who's about seven lengths off the leader now as they clear the next lap. Full grand is at the back. Moon over Miami in fourth place at the moment. The other joint favourite with the leader as they head towards the water jump halfway down the back straight. He's not doing well, is it? The moment. No. Jumped in well. He's like right at the back, and they've got a all slip for, oh my god. Moon over Miami, on the right there, the green and white jacket. It is Maradima who's made all the running so far and tackled in second by Mahogany Blaze on the right. Back in third, the big white face of Bull Pancake and Moon over Miami now coming under a bit of pressure in fourth place. Oh my god! But it's last, I understand. It should be third. Moon over Miami is very disappointing, looks beat as they run round the final turn. with a fluent display of jumping, wins the Henry VIII Novices chase from Mahogany Blaze in second, Pancake back in third, then Moon over Miami. It didn't win, that's four grand gone. And how can I not win and I won five times already? This is Maradima one, number three. Well, I'm still holding on to a ticket that I have not even won. <laughs> I could cry now, I could cry, but it's only because you're bloody recording why I won't. But I could, it's like £4,000. I can't believe I've lost four grand. I, I've been lucky all this time and now it's all gone wrong. I came here broke and now I'm even more broke. My dad's gonna kill me. I know how hard it was for you to get hold of that money. Believe it. Do you really think that I would just gamble? No, this is why I can't believe you've done that. Have you got the slip? 
So I told you, Moon Over Miami would win. Yes, and it lost. When I walked off to the office to place the bet, when I left you when I went off to place the bet, I thought to myself, Moon Over Miami isn't going to win this race. And if you look at what I actually placed the bet on, that's 4,000 to win on Maradima. On Maradima. <laughs> which means... Here I go. <laughs> <laughs> It's 13 grand that you've just won. <laughs> oh, my dad's gonna love you. That's not right, doing that. Come on, let's go get your cash before the next race. <laughs> oh, my God! I did hate him a minute ago. I did. I hated you. I was like, oh, my God. I don't know what to do, I don't know, I don't know. It's fantastic, because I'm debt free. I'm debt free for the first time in gone 30 years. In each episode of this series, I will offer an applicant a blind choice of either a pleasant experience, a treat, or a darker trick. They won't know which one they've chosen, and they may not know how or when it will happen to them. All the applicants responded to advertisements. These are the six people that I've selected. They just don't know it yet. Welcome to Trick or Treat. Tonight's applicant is Stephen. He is something of a conformist who lives an ordered life and, like most of us, is used to doing what is told. Using coercion and suggestion, we're going to look at the fine line between sanity and insanity and let Stephen step for a brief while over that line. And his journey to madness starts in this black cab. After having dinner in North London, Stephen has called this taxi to take him to a nearby underground station. Where are you going to, mate? However, the driver is an actor who has been briefed to ignore Stephen and drive 10 miles in the opposite direction towards this alleyway. There he'll find more actors who have been briefed to unnerve him and test his reaction to people outside of his normal and safe world. Hello. Excuse me, where are you going? All of the windows are sealed shut and the doors are locked. Whoa. Can you stop the car, please? If you don't talk to me, I want to call the police. Although we have complete control of the taxi, we didn't count on him calling the police. Please, please. Hi, right, I'm stuck in a taxi and this guy, I don't know where he's taking me, but uh, he won't, I've been knocking on the, on, the, on the glass door and he won't talk to me. And uh, he's supposed to have dropped me off at a tube station and I don't, I, we're not going to any tube station, we passed loads. Uh, Steve. Steve, Steve. Oh, uh, there, there's, a, there's a thing on the window where the driver is and it says it's the number of this cab, so it looks like the number's been removed. There's nothing there, there's nothing there. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. No, I don't know where I am, I don't know where I am. This is really, really not good. <laughs> He's taking me somewhere, isn't he? This is an emergency. <laughs> oh, go on. He's taking me down a dark alley. Fuck it, now, where are we going? Where the fuck hell is he taking me? I don't know. What the hell is going on? Oh my god. <laughs> Fucking hell. What is. There's loads of nutcases outside. Fuck. There's loads of weirdos outside. Shit. What's going on? Oh my god, it's, I know what's going on. It's Darren Brown. Oh my. <sighs> Hello? I'm on the phone to the police at the moment. Do hang up? Um, they want to speak to someone. Hello? Yeah, I'm, I'm, of course, of course, of course. No, it's very embarrassing and I'm sorry. Right. Take care, cheers. Oh. 
volunteer to be on the show. <laughs> yes. A little while ago. <laughs> and we'd love to use you. Okay. All right, let me explain to you how the show works. Right. You get to make a choice of one of these two cards. All right. One of them says trick, and one of them says treat. Right, okay. Now, if you pick the card that says treat, then what happens to you will be something nice. And if you pick the one that says trick, then it won't be. Okay. Okay. Do you want to play? Yep, go for it. Okay, great. I think I might be the police again. Do you want to cut them off? Shall I? Yeah. Okay. Here's your contract you need to sign. This right. just allows us to do anything we like with it. <laughs> What's your name at the bottom? Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. One man's sanity okay. is another man's insanity. One man's treat is another man's trick. So you're going to choose one of these two cards. Um, just choose one by putting your finger on one or the other. That one there. Stephen's taxi ride is just the start of a longer and stranger journey that will reveal what could so easily exist in all of us. Thanks for that. Speak to you soon. Okay, thanks. More of Stephen's story later. The idea of vibrational energy systems existing within our bodies that can be triggered by a variety of crystals is a mainstay of New Age thinking. Do you believe in, or you know, what are your thoughts on crystal energy, crystal healing power, that kind of thing? What are, what are your kind of thoughts on that? Um, I'm kind of open on it. It wouldn't be my natural no, no. inclination. But you clearly are sort of in your heart quite sceptical about it as a... It, it's n it would never have been my port of call, no. no. I sort of don't believe in it, or certainly don't believe in a lot of it. Um, but I think, like a lot of these things, there are little nuggets of truth in it that have sort of got blown out of proportion and, and exaggerated. And with uh, crystals and so on, what it's based on is the scientific fact, if you like, that we are all molecular beings, we're all made of molecules which vibrate. Crystals also vibrate, and they vibrate at different and discrete frequencies, and sometimes those frequencies will work in harmony with or against other things that are vibrating, like us, for example, and you mm. get people that can't wear quartz watches, and it's because their own vibration, if you like, um, is sort of overwhelming this tiny bit of quartz, which is too close to their own vibration, or work, working against it somehow, and their watch consistently stops. But what's interesting about it is that you can use it the other way. If you take a larger piece of quartz, mm. you can use it to override or interfere with the person's own kind of energy flow, if you want to use that word. So look, I'll show you this, because it's really interesting. Take your two fingers, like that, as if you just lift up the uh, lift up the, the mug. Perfect, and put it back down again. So it's relatively comfortable. It, it, it's not the old angle, maybe. Yeah, fairly yeah, comfortable. That was all right. All yeah. right. Okay, good. So I want you to do the same thing, but I'm going to put one of these on the back of your hand. So you might need to just sort of try and get the back of your hand flat. That's it. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So just keep, keep that on the table for now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now the other aspect, what I think makes these things work, especially when you start getting into the healing end, is people's expectation that certain things yeah. are going to happen and you kind of create that yourself. Yeah. So that psychological aspect of it is important. I want you to look at the quartz, and you listen to me, and just imagine that hand becoming weaker and weaker. And as you do that, as you keep focusing on the quartz, you genuinely try and lift the mug, while at the same time you focus on that kind of energy sapping out of your hand. Really try, just with those two fingers. <laughs> Go on, just try. <laughs> really heavy, but keep. <laughs> What's happening as you're trying? Ridiculous, man. That's fucking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And heavy. I'm gonna drop it. I'm gonna drop it. Really heavy? Yeah. That's ridiculous. So, what was just as you were doing that? What did that feel like? Oh, it felt really heavy. It felt okay. stupidly heavy, yeah. And you're genuinely trying? You're not just helping I was it trying. No, no. I don't want to help you at all. No, no. No. So you're genuinely trying? I was, I was exerting the same amount of pressure. Try this. It works in place. Stand up. Stand up. Um, I'll stick with the same stone. So what you're going to do is yeah. you're going to put this in the other hand. Are you right-handed or left-handed? I'm left-handed. That's what I thought. Okay, so hold that there. Hold it. Right. Okay. So with your other hand, yeah. you're going to hold on to just the 
end of the pencil there. Okay. Right? Now, don't lift it yet. Okay. Just hold it there Just like that. Just hold it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, now try not to move. Okay. Okay, so what you get is a warmth coming from this, first of all, that will move along here and along this hand of the pencil. So it'll take a moment, and you have to kind of imagine it a little bit, but mm -hmm. it's just sort of, again, it's just that sort of weakness. Just gently, just, just try and lift the pencil straight up. <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> try again? Stupid. <laughs> Nothing? No. You try, you're genuinely trying? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm lifting a pencil. Try again? Should, how hard can it be? Nothing. No, nothing. Excellent. Okay. Let, let go of that. I'm sweating. You are. No, you are. You're absolutely... Is that sexual energy? Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's Brilliant. quite complicated. There were many, many different layers That's going on at the same time. Um, there is a form of crystal that we carry around with us all the time um, that we don't really think of as crystals, but it works on crystalline energy. And what, have you got this mobile phone? Have you got one on you? Yes. Okay. Now, we've got your number, mm -hmm. so um, mm -hmm. can you put that... I, oh, it's one of those fans. Can you put, you put it to settings for me? I've got a message. It's from me. Oh, are you sweating? <laughs> That's... Uh, I like that. There we go. Yeah. All right, great. Has it got Bluetooth on it? These Bluetooth? No, I don't think so. No, no. okay. Well, I can't show you this, because I'm, I'm not supposed to know about this myself, so I don't want you knowing. Okay. All right. Okay. Take your crisps and sandwich and just hold them like that. Okay. Okay? I'm going to hold this on the back of your neck. Mm -hmm. In a moment, I'm going to get somebody to call you, all mm -hmm. right? What you'll feel mm -hmm. is a... If I, you should get like a prickling feeling mm -hmm. in the back of your neck, all right? Okay. It's, it, it is safe. It's only going to be for like a minute or so, all right? When I tell you to, you're going to try and lift the plate up. Can we, uh, can we call, please? Thank you. Can you feel that? Yeah. Okay. Focus on the plate. Mm -hmm. Focus on it. Try and lift. I lift it. Uh, I keep trying, okay. keep trying, keep trying. All right, just okay. keep focusing. I'll take okay. this. Just keep focusing. Keep trying to lift it. Right up, tug hard as you can. <laughs> keep going. Excellent. Thank you for that. You'll That's get a few mental. sort of malignant headaches the next couple oh, of days, cool. and then uh, <laughs> then it will go away. Thank you ever so much. Everything I told you about crystals and mobile phones was yeah. rubbish. All right, but right. I did need you to believe that while we were doing it. Yeah, so, of course, uh, I'm happy to believe that. Excellent. Yeah. Please okay. do. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much indeed. All I can say is I was genuinely surprised that. I thought, well, all right, I might be doing a bit of this, but I'm not fucking doing all of it, because that feels like lead now, you know? It's either true that I'm stopping it, or he's doing something mental, or we're both do you know, I don't know. Stephen received a phone call telling him to be at Trafalgar Square at midday. His ordeal in the taxi will have already placed him in a state of paranoia, so it should take only a few extra pushes from me to take him from a balanced lifestyle to temporary lunacy. Take me down a dark alley. Fuck it out. Where are we going? There's an actor handing out maps to the passing public. Map to madness? Each one contains directions to a room where a machine that I've designed awaits. So far, no one has followed the map. I believe Stephen's personality will impel him to follow the directions that will lead him towards the room. The process requires him to be fully alert, so I've arranged for his journey to be unsettling. Wait, can you spare some change, please? No, sorry. Please, I mean, for sorry. Sorry. Come on, man, please. Sorry.
the table, there are instructions that tell Stephen to sit in the chair and put on the headphones. This reprocessing technique is the final trigger in sending Stephen temporarily insane. They say that if you put an infinite number of monkeys and typewriters in a room, you would end up with something amazing, and of course a lot of monkey poo. In America, I wondered if I could get a bunch of bankers to come up with a numerical equivalent. Uh, thank you very much for coming out and doing this. Uh, let me explain what uh, we're going to do. There's a, a popular game we have in England, I don't know about you guys here, of guessing how many pieces of candy there are in a jar. Does that ring any bells to you, you guys? Yeah, or sweets, as we call it. That's, uh, excellent. Okay, well, that's, this is what we're going to do. You will work in different areas of kind of accounting and maths-related, number-related work, which is kind of, these are the skills that I want to draw on for what we're going to do here. So, uh, bearing that in mind, can we just nominate one of you who uh, I'm just going to put to one side for the moment and uh, who's going to have a, a special job. <laughs> okay, let's just get, let's get nicely pushed forward. Can we get a mic on you? <laughs> Let me explain uh, what your role is here. There's a board and sort of easel just over there. You're going to be writing down people's estimates. Um, the reason why we're doing it like this is that if any of you see or hear what other people are choosing before you, it does tend to influence you and it makes you sort of gear your own estimations towards what other people uh, have said prior to you, so please do so quietly and don't come back and discuss your figures with anybody else. Amy, you also get to go first, all right? So you please come and have a look at the jar, take a moment, and have your guess. When you've got a number in your head, just let me know if you've got something. Yes. Great, if you head over here for me then. This will be our writing area. You take the pen, put your own number at the top. Okay. You'll be person number one. Okay. Great, fantastic. Let's go with the lady there in the middle. Great, and off you go, and uh, somebody else step forward, thank you. Everybody done it? Okay, quite a wide range of numbers. Um, it's a very deceptive thing. The correct number of sweets in the jar uh, it's 136. It is only 136. Nowhere near as high as it, as it looks. Partly because there's something else in the jar, which I'm going to take out in a second. Anybody get close to that? <laughs> oh, somebody got 100. Who got 136? Was that you? Oh, congratulations. Just, just get a mic on you. Uh, what's your name? Rebecca. Rebecca, come forward for me. Thank you, Rebecca. Good. Well, first of all, congratulations. Thank let's, you. let's just come around here. There is, uh, a couple of other things going on here. First of all, I'm interested in the sort of the psychology of this and how people make their estimations and how they do this. And there's a certain sort of person that tends to do this better than other sorts of people. And also, I got a chance just to have a look at you guys earlier. Right? Just if you t take the lid off. Sorry, do you want to just grab all of that for me? Um, thank you. Um, if you reach inside there, and just you need to reach in the sweets a bit and pull out. There's a uh, Sort of a scroll. Great. You want to open that up for us? Now you've got to read this out in your nicest, clearest voice. From the top. There is a certain type of person who I think will estimate the correct number with the greatest accuracy. Firstly, it will be a woman, not a man. I also expect this to be someone who works in the field of brokerage. Her and dress is, sense. Is, is that true? Yes. Okay. Her dress sense will suggest a sharp mind, simply simple, simple colors, and probably bright colored shoes. <laughs> Jewelry will be silver and uncluttered, maybe a large ring. There will be at least one other accountant in the family, probably on her mother's side. From looking around the group, I think it will be the girl with the ponytail and the green army style top. Um, the, um, <laughs> are those things right? They're all correct. Yes? Yes. Accountant, another accountant in the family? Yes. Mother's side? Or? Yes, my mother. You've got a cat as well? Yes. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, I didn't, didn't want to write that in case that was wrong. <laughs> well, fantastic. And look, look, for the record, 
we didn't speak to you beforehand and ask you to no, tell you how many were not. in there or ask you to do any of that. And you haven't told us any of these things either? No, I have not. Fantastic. Okay, well, thank you uh, very much I'm indeed. I'm quite but, impressed. Well, I'm <laughs> thank pleased you to hear, Rebecca. Much. The rest of you don't feel despondent, even though some of your estimates were <laughs> terrible. Um, <laughs> There is so there's another side to this which interests me, which is, um, for those of you that, uh, well actually, taking all of you as a group, aside from one person who got it spot on, which I wasn't imagining you'd get it dead on, but you did, which is, which is sensational. Um, could you just bring the board back over? Let me get, a, get you a calculator, you're going to need this. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so, we're going to take what you, as an overall group, would have done if you were one entity. If we saw you as one entity, what estimate you would have come up with. So we're going to take the mean of the numbers that you've got. So if you take the calculator there for me, you're going to add up all of those numbers and uh, tell us the grand total. That sounds about right then. Okay, so the total is 2,856. Um, and there are 21 people here, so do you want to divide that number by 21? So we'll end up with the mean of the group. 136. 136, which is what you got. Yes. Which is the correct amount of sweets in the jar. <laughs> so, so, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you. much. <laughs> One. It was unbelievable that he knew everything about her. It's like dead on because I know her and it's just right on. It's unreal. I feel very comfortable estimating anything now uh, since I know I might actually get it right. 135, 136. Stephen's voyage into the unknown started when he was kidnapped in a taxi. If you don't talk to me, I'm going to call the plane. Then there was an irrelevant choice with only one outcome. Two weeks later, he received instructions to go to Trafalgar Square. A map and his curiosity have led him to this room in an old theater. I've aimed to remove all his normal barriers to acceptable social behavior. Its effect is only temporary and is perfectly safe but it is nonetheless very powerful. Around the room, I've left some theatrical props for him to experiment with. The general public are about to experience Stephen's temporary lunacy. Ah! Oh! Ah! 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 Ah!